So Trent's installing outriggers on this new uh, 358. They put a box up there so when he drills a hole it catches all the dust. It's clever. What's up everybody and welcome. We're actually uh, staying next to a 4.2 here. Before we begin, of course there's going to be noise everywhere. I have a question for everybody. I think I'm going to change the way that we're uh, I'm filming. I waste a lot of time editing little pieces together for no reason. I'm just going to turn the camera on from now on. And we'll film all of it. I'll just put the bigger pieces together to save time. And you'll get to see more. Hopefully we'll have some more uh, cast of characters here in the yard when we do. And we'll go from there. So let me know in the comments below if I think it's a good idea. We'll just, I'll try it in this episode here. And I'm just going to set the camera down. We're going to service this uh, 4.2 here. We'll go from there. So let's start the episode. Well, first off, let's start by saying we have a 216 with a 250 4.2 Yamaha, and we're gonna do the service minus the water pump because, of course, parts we can't get crap right now. It's the only thing we don't have. So, plugs, fuel filters. I've already changed the fuel water separator in the boat and checked the batteries. Everything is good there. No water in the fuel. So first, let's suck all the oil out. We got our uh, oil sucker here. You can drain it out by pulling the pans, but. Uh, much easier for us to suck all the oil since we have three, four, five, six motors sometimes, whatever it might be. What I'm going to try to do is just unedit everything and we'll just keep rolling. Whatever happens, happens. I think I've been focused too much on uh, what, like how to edit and you know what information to put, but I don't think you guys care. You guys want to just see the raw action and what happens and the crap we have to deal with and the fun of working on boats I guess so let's turn on our machine we're on this thing will suck all the oil out for us now let's pull our covers off here I'm gonna set the camera down a little fun all the way huh That pump changes noise like that. You can hear it's done. Nothing left to suck. It's all done sucking. Let me pull this off. Still got to change our oil filter too. We always pull these covers off because you want to look at our timing belt. Make sure it's not chewed up. It has a tendency to ride up on here and chew itself up. So if you see heavy dusting or anything or you see this belt getting pushed up into this, then you know there's a problem. But they've changed this tensioner back here, which well, keeps it down. It's got a little bit of a taper to it. So since the new ones have come out, they've corrected that. The older versions of the 4.2s, sometimes you'll see the belt getting eaten up on the top and you now it's time to change it and put that new tensioner up there. Now our oil's out. Let's get all these screws out so we can get our plugs out. Do this side with you here so you can see. I know you're not supposed to take them out with the impact, but I don't put them in with the impact, so never had an issue taking them out with an impact. Sometimes they stick in the socket, that's about the only issue. Gonna take a look at these two, make sure there's no rust or damage or anything going on here water intrusion or contamination or metal debris or anything. These are all good. Some new ones, make sure you use the right plug too. I think these are LFR 6A11s is what the uh, Yami calls for. Let's do it nice and slow, don't let it ratchet. It'll stop. Thing with all of them. Help if I put the put a new one in there. Not the used one back in there. Maybe. Huh? Now 
the episodes might become longer if I do it this way, but you'll get to see more of what actually happens instead of me editing everything out and cutting everything for, I guess, no reason. I think you guys want to see more of the inside of what actually is happening here. So we'll do it that way. If not, let me know in the comments, like I said, because I want to do whatever you guys want. It's not for me. So this little, you can feel the gasket snug down. That's it. And we just got to put this, uh, all this back in. Obviously, just put our coils back in and do the other side here. All right, so now let's get this oil filter up here. I always like to take this tool and just give it, make sure it's freed up. Sometimes they stick on there if they've been on there for quite a while. Brand new one. A little oil on our seal. hand tight. You don't need this thing to be crazy tight. Just like it says on the side. So our oil's out of it. Now we can put some oil in it. I think it was like 6.3 liters, something like that. A little over 6 liters. I already cleaned that out. She's nice and clean. And we got our oil. Drink it in. One. The sun must be over there on the barrels making making them pop. Expansion. So that popping noise was. There we go. Our paper towel. Less crap leaking on the motor. Got our cap back on here. The upper part of the motor is almost done. I'm gonna change the fuel filter out. Do that next. All right, so now our fuel filter is under this cover here. Get these off first. Oh, we lost that one. We'll get that later. Pull off our connector here for the fuel water sensor. Pull that through or you'll end up twisting the crap out of it. Sometimes you can get these by hand. Yep. They're older generations. They, they tend to stick, but the new ones are good. Still a little gas. Making a mess. Pull that out. We got a new one here. Really? He's like a millimeter away from his fingers cutting starboard. Safety first. What do you want? What are you making? Two top fillers. Look like you're about to, about to have nine. You're gonna have nine fingers. It look like there soon. It's fine. Sometimes we gotta work fast, man. We gotta get job done. Right. Get it done. Get it done. All right. Back to what we were doing before we got interrupted. Get our new filter in there. There was no water in the fuel water separator, so this fuel that's in here is not worth wasting. You can look and see if there's anything. There's no contamination, nothing inside there. This needs to be snugged up also. See, and then this thing will end up twisting up so you can untwist it or feel it, make sure that's not all twisted inside. It goes back underneath our little uh, metal plate here. 
You know, let's see if I can find that screw. It's right there. Well, I got it. That never happens. Oh, I had it. Yeah, I win. Now we'll put our wire back in there. There we go. We've got some uh, Yama Shield. We we'll spray it all over everything here. This stuff doesn't hurt anything. Can't overdo it, put it that way. It'll just leak out of the pan, whatever's dripping. Put all our covers back on. It's like armor all for outboards. Cover back on here. So we can get that screw in that we dropped without dropping it again. Oh. Don't do it. Don't fall. Well, I got it. Just barely enough room to get your hands in there. There we go. I'm gonna spraying off all this, I'm spraying all this down with corrosion block till we get to uh, put our covers on the top and the front, our rear. So to put a nice coating on everything. Let's get our covers. Not that one. Guy right here. Snap it on the front. We can soak this down too. Doesn't hurt anything. It's a little crooked. Put our 10 millimeter bolt back in here. down too. Make everything shiny. We'll jump down and go to the front. Like I say, you can't hurt with this stuff. It only helps, especially in the salt water environment. Another thing too to look for is, uh, I already did, but your thermostats that are up here. Make sure you got no corrosion around them or anything. You gotta be changed out like every 300 hours, but that's another thing. We gotta look and see how many hours are on this so we can reset the maintenance. Jump down. I'm just gonna spray in the front of this all down. And we gotta trim it up, pull the prop, do the gear oil. Got our cover on here. I suppose you don't need to spray the covers down, but I think they look good when they're shiny. Upper part of the motor is done, now let's trim it. And do our gear case. Barnacle bill. Looks like we also have to uh, tighten up our transducer here. Looks like she's a little loose. Tighten that down too. Ooh, we got some growth. Yummy. I've got a new anode for it here. Obviously, we're going to do that. We'll clean this stuff up. Grease everything here. Grease our Zerks on here. There's one of them right there. Alright, so let's get our gear case screens off of here. I'm gonna do that first. On the other side is the gear oil drain screw. Should be loose now. Ta-da! Get our pan. Flat head. You always want to crack your upper one first. In case there's pressure, it won't blow up on you as easy if uh, you pull this one and release it. This one didn't have any pressure, luckily. Yummy. Obviously, it sits in the water. I just want to make sure we don't have any excessive metal or anything on our plug here. There's no uh, water in our gear oil, it looks like. Usually, it's hazy if there's water in it. It all looks good. We'll let that drain. We'll pull our prop off. pin first. Okay. Wasn't 
wasn't super tight to begin with. So you want to look for here is fishing string in this seal and on this one right here. Get fishing line around here. That's what's supposed to save the seal, supposed to grab it there. If it gets past it, they can dig your seal out here. So this one looks good. Get some grease on it. Put that back down on there. Grease all this up so next time we service it or they gotta pull it off, it'll come off easy. I usually do here is just until she's tight and then look and see where my hole is for my cutter pin. Snug it until it reaches the next spot. She is We're close. Perfect. Slide a new one in there. Bend it up. Give that one to bend down a little bit. There we go. So before we fill our gear case up, let's get this nasty anode off the bottom here. Let's see if I can scrape this one to get it to get, a, get our impact on it. already had lunch unless we'd have some oysters for lunch. Now yeah, we just gotta wheel off our uh, all these parts here, little cover plates and these. So let me clean these parts up real quick on the wheel over there. We'll slap it back on there. Well, a new one anyways, not that one. All right, I got our bolts and everything cleaned up down there now. But let's put some grease inside of our steering here first. Got our grease gun. Oh, there she goes. You hear it squeezing out. Wipe that off. There we go. Also put a little bit here. I'll protect those. Let me help to keep those uh, grinding or metal to metal if you don't put a little grease on those. Grease on our seals here. Doesn't hurt anything. All right, before we put zinc on, let's tighten this transducer. There we go. She won't be flopping around anymore. Now, do our anode. It would help if I had the anode in my hand. <laughs> I just realized something. I wasn't even paying attention. That's not the same anode as that. The reason I have that bend in it is because this right here is in your way. Let me go get the right one. There we go, we got the right one now. Let's try that again. It definitely doesn't smell good right here. Make sure you put your bonding wire back on there. Fill our gear case up. I'm gonna put our filler nozzle in here. I always do it before I trim it down. It makes it easier to try to put it in right here instead of on the ground. Now you want to make sure this is about even or level, I would say. You turn this on different kind of uh, pumps you can use for this, but this is HD gear oil, just a hand pump that we use. To build some pressure. Sounds like she's leaking out of our seal here. There we go, tightened it up. Doesn't take much, and you just kinda wanna wait until it starts coming out of here. So we wait. 
Takes a little time because this gyro is pretty thick. Try to put a pan down to catch the extra two. There she goes. Now you see the air bubbles coming out of it. We're gonna let that sit. So what we'll do is we'll go jump on the dash here and reset our uh, maintenance and see how many hours are on the motor. And let that air come out of anything that might be down here air-wise will bleed out. So will give it a couple minutes and we'll double check it and seal it off. Get up here, turn our key switch on, see what we got. Menu. Maintenance. We are at 88 hours out of 100. It's time to reset it. Yes. Nice. That's it. Let's see how many hours are on it. Total hours, 219. That's pretty good. This thing's getting used. It's a 2021, so. I bet you this boat's been in service for a little over a year. That's a twice as many as normal. Usually you get about 100 hours a year on a boat. We'll check all this out here after we start it. Let's go finish our gear case. So I've already put new seals on here and we've cleaned our drain plugs off. The magnetic one goes on the bottom always. This is just our drain vent, I guess you'd call it. So let's double check. It's more fluid in it, make sure there's no more air or anything in it. It's like good solid fluid. Now we can plug the top off here. Just needs to be snug. If you go too far with this, you can actually break that little paper gasket. Now, I do the same thing. I'll trim this up to make it easier to access this piece. Slide our bucket. Try to catch what we can. Now, if we pull this, you're not going to get much draining out of it because you have the top vent in. You'll just get a little bit of spillage when you take this off. We are all filled. And our last piece, let's put our, uh, already cleaned the inside of these out, all the barnacles off of there. Slap these in there. It's time to go get a hose so we can fire it up. Now this is four millimeter if anybody ever was wondering. They all are four millimeter, doesn't matter what year it is. That's what you need to use to uh, take these little screens off to get to the gear oil plug in the bottom. She's tight. We are done. Minus a water pump, like I said, we can't get. So it's a full service without a water pump, I guess. One of these days we'll get parts again. Let's get everything out of the way so we can get some water running. I'm gonna soak my tools down here, huh? Stick that up there for now. Put my bag over here. We'll just borrow this pursuit for now. Get rid of our gear oil. Take you on a journey with me here. Over to our oil bucket over here. Looks like someone left a nice snap on tool over here. I think I know who it is. Let me go yell at him. Hey! You have a, a snap on needle nose that's over in the oil drum over there? Okay. See, I told you. <laughs> All right, let's get a hose, trim this down, and fire it up. Our hose connection right here. We're hooked up. Now let's fire it up. I'm gonna turn the batteries on both, and there they are. E. We'll listen to her roar. enough water pressure to run it but you don't want to rev it up or anything or you could starve the water pump and hurt it potentially so letting it idle is okay but I wouldn't rev it up at all I like how she's nice and shiny Yet. It's like our trim and tilt's working. Let's 
shift and make sure she shifts. You can see it moving. This is a cable driven right there. Watch it shift. See it right the screen. Look right there. You can see it coming to neutral. I'm gonna make sure that's moving all the way and then when it comes back into neutral, it's sitting right in between those marks like it is. Perfect. Well, everything's good on this boat. Check out that one. That's a brand new S358. It's only got two uh, two of the Yamihas on it there and it's a couple feet smaller than the 278. Doesn't have that rear slider seat. Looks a lot smaller than the not smaller so much, but there's one motor missing. They got two engines. And not as much of the gimmicky uh, automation, I guess, would be on that boat as, as the Big Brother or the 428. Anyway, that being said, I'm done for today. Let me know for sure if you like this new style of uh, film that I'm doing where I'm just gonna kind of let it go and show you whatever we can show you. As always, I appreciate it. I will see you next time. Later. There's no block over here. Huh? There's no block on the side over here. Yeah, you want me to watch? You want me to watch the pole over here or whatever? Yeah, I'll let you know. You should be able to hear it if you hit the pole or something here. They're clear. You got nothing over here. <laughs>